This was one of the more fascinating videos I have made. In doing research for this, I found some really interesting stuff. I wanted to see if there's any evidence behind someone who plays well at the college level translating to playing well at the NFL level. In certain positions, I already know it doesn't, but in some positions, not only does it kind of matter, there's positions where it really matters. The way I determined what, you know, how do you define playing well at the college level, I use pro football focus grades. Again, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I tend to think they're at least a good baseline to look at, and you find some really interesting stuff when going through this. So that's what I did, is I looked at every first round pick from a large sample size and simply just gave every single player a grade, one through four. If you got a four, that means you're an elite player. If you got a three, that means you're a good player. If you got a two, that means you have some value. And then one is just a complete bust. So one through four, the ideal score would be a four. The worst score would be a one. And then I simply just looked at how you graded in terms of PFF grades your last year in college. Just trying to see, can we figure out if there's some, some follow through? Is there a way that we can tell, okay, yeah, if you're good at this position in college, there seems to be some evidence to support that you'll probably be a good NFL player or, hey, you were good in college, but that doesn't mean you're going to be good at the NFL level. There's more to it than that. I wanted to see which positions that really matters in, and I found some really fascinating stuff, so let's just get into it. Right off the bat, this is everyone. So this is everyone's grade. Uh, the people that if you graded 90 or better, your score was 2.76, which is the highest. It then drops to 2.44 if you graded in the 80s and even 2.00 if you graded in the 70s and then it actually jumps up in the 60s 2.33 my guess would be a small sample size there weren't that many players who even graded in the 60s and were a first round pick it's worth noting the only player who got a four that graded in the 60s was josh allen the quarterback not the edge rusher of course and there was only one player who got uh, a score of four who graded in the 70s their last year in college that was jair alexander so just looking at everyone here, what you can kind of learn from this is, okay, there seems to be something here, but it's not perfect. But, and that's true. I, I would definitely say that that's true. But if you look at individual positions, you do find some very interesting trends. First, for safeties, this is one of the more dramatic shifts you'll see is that safeties who graded in the 90s got on average scored uh, a three. Players who graded in the 80s on average scored a 2.5, and then the 70s scored just a 1.75. So there's a big correlation between grading well at the safety position in the NFL, uh, in college to grading well at the NFL level. That's certainly very interesting because I wouldn't have guessed that because typically you think coverage is something that fluctuates pretty heavily, but according to this, not so much. As for cornerbacks, this is where some of these are going to get a little bit more fascinating. So for a corner, you see that, okay, the best score here still is 90 plus. 90 plus is very good. And 90 plus is going to be very good for most of these categories. But then there doesn't seem to be too much of a difference between grading an 89 or a 75, right? In fact, below 80 actually has a higher score than the 80 to 89 range. There's two ways you could look at this. The first of which is you could say, oh, okay, it doesn't really matter then because there's not a straight line going up, but that's not necessarily how I would look at it. I kind of view it as if you have above a 90 grade, you're probably gonna be pretty good at the NFL level. But if you have below a 90 grade, it doesn't really matter too much if it's an 85 or a 75. I wouldn't get too concerned with that. Similar thing with wide receivers. And you're going to see some of these scores, you know, be higher or lower just across the board. Like, for example, you know, a wide receiver, the best category here is 2.33, whereas that was, you know, not considered that great of a category for corners just because wide receiver is a harder position to draft. So less good wide receivers in round one you see kind of a similar thing right it does seem to be a benefit to have a grade over 90 but if it's under 90 that seems to be the cutoff and it's not really great anyone under 90 doesn't really have that high of a success rate out of the first rounders so maybe i guess the lesson here is you want to if you're going to get somebody that you like as a wide receiver try to make sure they have a 90 plus grade it's not necessarily something you have to get but it's certainly a benefit Going over to defensive line, this is one of the more consistent, you know, straight line traits you'll see of like edge rusher, for example. This is very important. I mean, this is, again, 
uh, you go from 3.1 to 2.3 to 1.3. So nearly a one point jump for each 10 point grade section. Basically what this tells you is, hey, uh, for a edge rusher, if they have a high PFF grade, probably gonna work out. If they don't have a high PFF grade, probably not gonna work out. So that's a very fascinating thing is that production for edge definitely translates to being a good NFL player. For interior defensive line, it's not as dramatic, but still is dramatic. Again, I should mention, you're gonna kinda see some variance in the grading uh, categories I put here. You know, I typically would do 90, 80, and 70, but sometimes the sample size gets a little bit wonky when you do that. I wanted to keep about as even of a sample size in each category as I could, so, for example, for this one, I made the cutoff at 85 instead of 80. So just in case you're wondering why that's the case. But yeah, anyways, interior defensive lineman doesn't seem like it's as big of a jump, but definitely looking at grades is a pretty good predictor. For linebackers, it's another one of those, okay, I'm not sure if I would consider this to be a clear straight line. It obviously isn't. The players who graded in the 80s performed better than the players who graded in the 90s, but they both performed much better than players who graded in the 70s. So for me, this kind of tells me, hey, there's a cutoff here. You want a guy who's at least going to grade 80 or better. That's kind of the cutoff. And after that point, it doesn't really matter too much. Use film to figure out which one you like the best, but make sure that they've at least had production good enough for an 80 PFF grade. Going over to offensive line, it's another one. This kind of you know, just checks out in my head. I was assuming that if edge rushers were very good, you know, it was a very good predictor using PFF grade, I would assume offensive line is the same. And it is, uh, you know, again, uh, you see that line of the players who graded in the 90s performed well, players who graded in the 70s have not performed well at the NFL level. Uh, again, not as big of a jump as a couple of the other categories, but still a pretty sizable jump in something that, you know, I think it's fair to say, okay, it, when you're evaluating offensive line film, and just check out the PFF grades while you're doing it. Going over to tight ends, should mention for tight ends and halfbacks, I used rounds one and two just to get a bigger sample size. Not that many tight ends or halfbacks go in round one. But again, you kind of see something that we've seen throughout of guys who have above a 90 grade very well, but not really too much correlation between having a, you know, a 70 or 80 grade. That doesn't seem to matter too much. For halfbacks, again, this is kind of a weird one where maybe you could say for halfbacks, uh, if you have sub 80, then that's a danger, but anything above 80 and you feel fine about that, maybe that's how you could read this. To me, I don't know. I mean, this this is not a very dramatic one whatsoever. I don't know what we've learned too much from the halfback position. And finally, the quarterbacks, the one that we're all most interested in, the one that we want to know, how do we evaluate quarterbacks better? This isn't a great indicator of how to evaluate quarterbacks. It really isn't. I mean, you see this scale, and the one thing you might think is, oh, okay, well, by this scale, you have to get to at least an 85. That seems like that would make some sense. Uh, 85, you know, actually performs better in the 85 to 90 range than the 90 plus range, and then sub 85 really struggles. But the one exception to that was Josh Allen, who, as I mentioned, he's the only guy who had a sub 70 grade and ended up with a score of four by me, and only one of two guys to have a sub 80 grade and end up with a four. So very fascinating stuff there. So what did we learn? Right here, positions to pay attention to grades. Absolutely, safeties, defensive line, and offensive line. This data, to me, tells me you should be paying attention to PFF grades, or at least, I guess, more broadly speaking, uh, production in general. Whatever you feel is the best way to measure production, you should be paying attention to that stuff at those three positions. If you're a safety who performs well now, you're going to be good. If you're a defensive or offensive lineman who performs well now, you're going to be good. If you don't perform well now, uh, basically what I'm saying is I don't love project guys at these positions. That's kind of the way to view it. Now for positions to maybe pay attention to grades, these are all positions where I think you can learn something, and maybe not the halfbacks at the bottom, but wide receivers, you can definitely learn that, hey, you want to make sure he has above a 90 PFF grade. Cornerbacks, kind of the same thing. You don't need it, but it tends to correlate well to success. Linebackers, you want to make sure that you get above that 80 PFF grade threshold. Tight ends, you want to make sure that, again, it really helps if you have above 90, that, that 
tend to translate pretty well. And again, halfbacks, uh, you know, take it or leave it. I put it on here because I guess I think some people could still say, yeah, yeah, I'll take a look at it. You know, let me know to grade. Uh, I'd rather have that information than not have that information, but it's not, I don't think it's going to be too dramatic. For positions to not pay attention to grades, I just simply have quarterback. That's the only one that I have here. I think that's the only one where I would literally, really just say, yeah, yeah, I don't really see much of a correlation there. Again, maybe the idea is make sure you get a guy who has at least an 85 grade, but then you would have missed out on Josh Allen. I think you just watch film. Uh, quarterback is such a hard position to evaluate. I still think the best way for that position is to watch film, but it seems like for every other position, there is at least some value in looking at data. So yeah, at the end of the day, in conclusion, I would say that this is fascinating and I'm certainly going to pay more attention to, you know, production at certain categories where I kind of haven't done that in years past. So this is part of the fun of the off season and part of the fun of, you know, being someone who, listen, I've been doing this for what, three or four years now. So I've only had a few cracks at this draft stuff. And every year I think I, I get a good amount wrong and then try to learn and grow from it and see what I can get more right in the future and uh you know hopefully i continue to have this happen that's kind of the the idea is eventually uh, eventually get it down and be able to never miss on any draft prospects uh altogether right okay no of course you're always going to miss on some but you know it'd be fun to get more right uh because that's kind of what makes this fun is trying to get this stuff right so i found this stuff really interesting again i, I don't know it's always hard to tell about how well these videos are going to do. Sometimes the ones that I'm super fascinated by don't do that well. Sometimes the ones that I like, eh, I guess I'll make a video on this and then like it blows up. So uh, who, who knows of this stuff? But in terms, you know, I, I don't know exactly what everyone else wants to see, but I love doing this stuff. This is probably the most fun stuff I do during the off season. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.